Okay, so in episode number 18, I did a video on uh, falling sea levels, essentially. And what I want to do is I want to direct you to that video because I know by the numbers of people listening to the podcast and the number of views that the video has gotten, the, the views fall off a cliff for the video. The video is an integral part of this. You're going to need to understand the video in order to understand future episodes. So I'm going to put a link to the specific video in the description it's only fucking seven or eight minutes long and it's worth it at least i think it's worth it if you're listening to me you know every day or every other day you're following along to this take my word for it pause this hit that recording and just watch it because i'm gonna basically ex ex extrapolate from it somewhat so in it's included just to give you a tip bit if you haven't clicked on that link yet i explain what and where Doggerland is and to give you an idea of what and where it is it's a country about five times the size of the United Kingdom that's in Europe that's now underwater fascinating shit you could also walk to Australia that's explained in the video as well from pretty no, not from pretty much anywhere from, but from Asia certainly anyway the picture that accompanies this particular episode is a picture of the southern hemisphere of our planet you'll probably recognize South America, South Africa, and Australia on it, okay? Now, one thing that's missing off that map is Antarctica, an entire continent. It's just not on it. Now, bearing in mind that this is a scientifically accurate map, you could essentially sail around the world going by the details on this map. This map was an 18, this map was made in 1818, okay? 202 years ago, they made this map. Now, why, pray tell, does it not have an entire continent on it? Well, it's easily explained. We didn't discover Antarctica until 1819. So that map, this map that accompanies this episode, it's called the Pinkerton map of 1818. And the reason Antarctica isn't on it is because it hadn't been discovered yet. All makes perfect logical sense. Here's one for you. Check out the Piri Reese map. Okay, Google Piri Reese, P-I-R-I-R-E. Is the Piri Reese map okay? And on it, Antarctica is there. No big deal. So what? Presumably, it was made after eighteen eighteen. Oh no, fuck! It wasn't. It was made in fifteen thirteen, five hundred and seven years ago, three hundred and five years before our first map, which included Antarctica. Three hundred and five years before we discovered it, it's on a much older map. How the fuck did that even happen? Okay, now this map, the Piri Rees map, was written or drawn, should I say, by a Turkish uh, cartographer. A cartographer is just a, a map maker. He was an admiral, I think, in Turkey, who in his own handwriting on the map says that he based it on over 100 source maps. So basically he got in his hands on loads of maps that were really old to him. OK, so he was knocking around 500 years ago and 500 years ago, he somehow managed to get his hands on really old maps hundreds of them, or at least a hun over a hundred of them, in his own words. And what he basically did was, he put them all together as best he could, and made one map out of it, which has since known to become, or since become known as the Piri Reese map. Okay, now this actually, just as an aside, it's an interesting thing, there's this thing, it's called the wisdom of the crowd. It's fucking fascinating shit. So if you look at a cow out in the field, okay, and you guess the weight. Let's say somebody asks you, what weight do you think that cow is? You go, oh, fuck, I don't know. 250 kilos. You give it a guess. Odds are you're not going to get it right. Unless, you know, you weigh cows for a living or have some understanding of the weight of an animal and the dimensions and, and whatever else, okay? But for the most part of us, we're all just going to go, uh, 300 kilos, uh, a ton, a uh, half a ton, two ton. We're going to get it vastly wrong, okay? Some of us are going to be way over. And I mean fucking way over. You ask, uh, you ask 200 people on the street, how much does a cow weigh? Some dope's going to say a ton, okay? It's just people are stupid. And also some people are going to say, oh, I don't know, 17 kilos. Like, you're going to get dumb people giving too high a guess and too low a guess and you know reasonably intelligent people getting it you know within 20 or 30 percent of the actual weight of it but here's one for you you average all these people's guesses and the accuracy of that is incredible and the same applies for if you fill up a bucket full of beans and you have a guess how many beans competition you probably remember this from 
school when you were a kid when you had little kind of fundraisers or whatever there was always a big jar full of jelly babies or something and oh guess how many jelly babies and closest one wins a prize the closest one mightn't be that close okay but add up all the guesses and divide them by the amount of people who guessed and essentially get the average and you will not believe how accurate that is like from something that could have a couple of thousand jelly beans if you have let's say 200 people you're going to get it within 10 or 20 jelly beans when there's thousands of the fucking things in there insane but anyway i digress back to maps there's another interesting thing about maps and it's the map that we're all familiar with the world map say so you've got north and north america to the top left south america to the bottom left um asia top right and australia bottom right with the north pole at the top and the south pole at the bottom the general world map that you're all familiar with you would not believe the inaccuracy of that map it's incredible now the shapes of all the countries or continents or land masses or seas on it that's pretty accurate that's pretty decent but in order to make it in order to make it kind of work they have to bend it a little because if if you can imagine peeling an orange so an orange is a, is a sphere much like the earth if you peel an orange you're not going to get, end up with a rectangle no matter what way you peel it you're not going to end up with a rectangle so you can imagine if all the if you drew all the countries of the earth onto an orange and then unpeeled the orange the peel if you could peel it off in one piece that would be more accurate than what you're used to seeing what you're used to seeing has to be dragged for it to just kind of work in a rectangle now the outcome of that basically means that anything towards the north pole gets blown up bigger than it actually is and i think the opposite is true for the south pole everything kind of gets shrank so when you look at your typical world map russia looks like it takes up about a third of the fucking world but it's probably 10 times bigger or at least twice as big maybe 10 times is a bit of an exaggeration but it's easily a third the size that it is on the map um, that's the Mercator projection. If you just Google Mercator projection inaccuracies, you'll get something. Why the fuck am I talking about ancient maps that have the Antarctica on it and Doggerland and walking to Australia? What's the fucking point? The point is, they're not as they seem. We've been spun a narrative. I remember, I don't know how I fucking remember this, but it's one of the things I learned in history when I was a kid, was that Machu Picchu was discovered in 1911. It's just, I don't know how I managed to remember that little nugget of information, but Machu Picchu apparently was discovered in 1911, okay? As I learned in history. As a child, and I just swallowed it and all was well and never thought twice about it. But thinking back on it, what do you mean discovered? Like, the people who built it, like, what would they make of us quote unquote discovering it and that's something that's never really gotten across it certainly was never part of any of my education that there were civilizations that predated ours that had their own notions of astronomy their own notions of an afterlife and spirituality and even medicine i mean these days like it's very 2020 to say this you know the food that you eat affects your gut microbiome and your body and mind are all connected and if you want to be happy and healthy you should eat well and get your vitamins and get your minerals and get your fats and all this that's all very 2020 but what's his face was i can't remember his name back in a split second and we're back in the room hippocrates said let food be thy medicine oh fair play to him but he said it two thousand fucking years ago like we've lost all this knowledge we're only starting to fucking relearn pretty much everything i mean how the fuck was it okay that we didn't quote unquote discover antarctica until 1819 but yet we discovered uranus in 1781 okay so 30 odd years before finding a continent on our planet we found another planet god knows how many hundreds of millions of fucking years away or miles away like what the fuck what what sent me down this rabbit hole in the fucking first place if if you might remember i was going to do or attempted to do a mini series on cannabis 
the first episode was on the terminology because that's just something you know I had it to hand and it was in my head and I just kind of blurted it out but then I said to myself you know the next episode should be probably on the history of, of cannabis and I started saying to myself well where do you start with the history of cannabis do you start I don't know 40 million years ago when it first evolved probably a little bit too far do you go back to 1937 I thought that might be a good time because it was the first or at least what I thought was the first law regarding cannabis it was called in 1937 you had the marijuana tax act which essentially made it illegal now skip a, a decade or two and that was taken on board by the UN and it was banned in every country in the world not to mention you know we've been using this stuff for two and a half thousand years at least like we know that for a fact we found residue of cannabis uh, delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol specifically the psychoactive part the good stuff we found that in ancient sites dating two and a half thousand years ago now that's that's the oldest place we found it so far like who knows how long we've had a relationship with it so do I start 40 million years ago do i start two and a half thousand years ago do i start with the 1937 marijuana tax act or here's another fucking time the first law that i'm aware of in relation to cannabis actually wasn't in 1937 when it was in when it was banned it was in 1619 in virginia in what we call the united states of america now and it was a law that ordered farmers to grow it not stop growing it to fucking grow it okay so it's just another example of how important it is to know the origins of who and what we are and to appreciate that there is more than meets the eye. To appreciate that you've been spun, you, and again, by you, I mean me, I mean we, okay? We've been spun a narrative. And that narrative always, in every case, always benefits the powers that be or they or whatever it is it it benefits the people in control the people who control power okay who these people are they're you and me believe it or not to varying degrees but until we understand who we are what we are where we came from where all this stuff comes from that we think we quote unquote know and have learned we're never going to fully understand what the fuck is going on around us and i'm looking forward to spending the next three weeks of this lockdown day by day picking up little bits and pieces of information explaining them as best i can and as i said a couple of episodes back using the 40 odd episodes then to concretize my worldview get it into an hour and a half long documentary and fucking publicize the shit out of it like instead of getting loads of listeners all the time if i could get one thing if i could do one thing get it right incorporate as much of this as i can and take the time to you know write a script and be fucking anal about it like you know cross my t's and dot my i's and tell our story like it hasn't been told certainly not to me now maybe somebody else has done it but fuck it i'm going to do it for myself and the benefit of everybody else that happens to listen to it and on that note i'll chat to you tomorrow but before I let you go, I'd just like to remind everybody that this episode and all the episodes on YouTube have been brought to you by past guest and friend of the show, Pat McKeown. Pat is very similar to myself insofar as that he's long had an interest in the mind and more specifically the brain and how they both interact to such an extent that he went and spent four years getting a degree in neuroscience and then spent a further year in getting a master's in psychology. Now what he's done is pretty fucking cool. He's after setting up his own YouTube channel. It's called Pat Psychology Masters and there's a link in the description. Now what he's done here is he's uploaded all the best bits that he's learned over the last five years and put them into short, plain English, easy to understand YouTube videos for the likes of myself. His YouTube channel has been a massive resource for me in understanding both my mind and the mind of others. So hit up Pat Psychology Masters YouTube channel, subscribe, give it a like and a comment and a share, all that kind of stuff helps and I'll chat to you soon.